Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is a lecture on thermodynamic cycles. So these are the learning objectives for this lecture. So um, you will, by the end of this, be able to describe the operation of uh, Otto, Diesel and Brayton cycles. So these are the three most common uh, thermodynamic cycles that are used in transportation and power generation in the modern world. You'll be able to describe these three cycles, the Otto, Diesel and Brayton cycle, um, thermodynamic cycles, as a function of their constituent processes. I'm going to talk about those um, on the coming slides, actually. Uh, you'll be able to derive the ideal cycle efficiency um, uh, for a thermodynamic cycle, and you'll be able to calculate the temperature and pressures as you go around these cycles. So firstly, just in this briefly introduction, I just want to remind you um, of some terminology that you should know. And if you don't know what any of these words mean, then please go back and look them up. So they should be in your first year notes. Um, so you need to know what these mean and um, what they mean in the thermodynamic context um, before you proceed. So as a reminder, an isobaric process, as the name suggests, uh, is a process that's carried out at constant pressure. Isochoric, which this one um, sometimes catches uh, students out, so this is a process that's carried out at um, constant volume. Isothermal is a process that's carried out at constant pressure. And an adiabatic process, if you remember, is a process in which no transfer of heat occurs between the system and surroundings. So in this, the conservation of energy is only um, transferred as work, Okay, so there's no heat transfer. And finally, an isentropic process is a reversible adiabatic process um, in which entropy is maintained. So it's a constant entropy process. The other terms and equations that you should remember from your first year thermodynamics is um, the change in internal energy. So remember that U is the um, letter used to denote internal energy. So the change in internal energy, so U2 minus U1, is mass times um, specific uh, heat capacity at constant volume times the, the um, uh, change in temperatures. And one thing just to remind you, so in thermodynamics, a capital letter denotes a total quantity, um, so it's total internal energy, and a um, lowercase letter denotes a specific quantity, so... Um, uh, whatever it is per unit mass. So be internal energy per unit mass would be the specific internal energy. The change in enthalpy, and denoted enthalpy is H, is change in enthalpy is equal to mass times the specific heat capacity at constant pressure um, times delta T. And the other one that you need to remember is um, for a general polytropic process that temperature, pressure and volume can all be related um, by this. So the ratio of um, temperatures is equal to the ratio of pressures, but to this exponent um, of gamma, where gamma is the ratio of the specific heats. And again, if you've forgotten any of this, just go back, look at the first year notes and remind yourself. Okay, so finally in this introduction, I just want to talk about some of the terminology in terms of a um, reciprocating engine, because um, that's how majority transports operate at the moment. So you might already know this, but if you don't, um, here's a very crude schematic of a um, internal combustion engine. So we've got a piston that's in this that's in the engine, so this can move up and down. And the piston is connected to the crank, which will turn the wheels by this connection rod. And um, we've got inlet and open exhaust valves here, injectors and spark plugs and so on. <clears throat> but what I'm more interested in really here is the terminology. So the piston, when it's right at the very top, is at what's called top dead centre. Okay, so this will be up here and the, the piston will be as far, high, as far high as it can go in the cylinder. And... As it rotates round, when it gets to the bottom, it's at bottom dead centre. And the difference between those two is the stroke of the engine. Or, um, uh, yeah, sorry, it's the stroke of the engine. The volume um, 
that the piston um, displaces over that stroke is the swept volume, and that's dictated by volume subscript S. Now, there's always in an engine, due to the packaging, um, a little bit of space at the top of the cylinder. Okay, so you can see this is housing the the, the valves and the spark plug and um, injector and so on. And this is called the clearance volume. And if you add the swept volume to the clearance volume, then you get the total volume of the um, cylinder. Now, um, if you look in automotive books um, and you're looking at um, pressure volume diagrams and things, or you know how they often be referred to in terms of crank angle degrees. So this obviously is the, the crank is rotating around and around. Um, it it's does 360, so we've got 360 crank angle degrees for one revolution. So just to, um, there's some formulas for this. So the, the, um, the swept volume is just a purely geometric function. So it's the volume of a cylinder where DC is the diameter of the um, cylinder and L is the stroke. The clearance volume, there is no formula for that because it will just depend on the design and whatever's at the top. The total volume is the swept volume plus the clearance volume. And this is an important parameter that you need to um, remember as we're going forward is the compression ratio, okay? So the compression ratio is um, the ratio of the total volume to the swept volume. So basically how many times the gas has been compressed. And because the total volume can be written as the swept volume plus the clearance volume, you can rewrite it as this. And finally, the engine displacement, which you often see, you know, if you're looking at cars where it's one litre, two litre, or whatever, is um, the number of cylinders times by the swept volume of each cylinder.